Hey, George here again. This is part two to the uh, closed suctioning technique and tips that I'm bringing you. This part of the video is going to focus on how to do tracheal suctioning. So before you tracheal suction your patient, there's a few things you need to do to ensure that you are doing this procedure properly and safely. And remember, the procedure could change depending on what area you're working in or um, who knows, the protocols that are in the intensive care units or the emergency units in the hospitals that you're working in or possibly even in the nursing homes. So I'm going to show you one technique, but remember there's a lot of variations to this. Now before you suction out your patient, you have to assess the need for suctioning. So just don't go routinely and suction patients out. You should be only suctioning the patient's airways, right, the tracheal airway, when it's required because this can be very hazardous to your patients. So assess the need for suctioning. So we'll go to our patient and for this video I'm using a mannequin because it's really hard to get consent from patients to show real patients on a, on a video for demonstrations. So we're going to use the mannequin and uh, the patient's receiving ventilation from a, a mechanical ventilator and we also happen to have the patient on a monitor. Now I've got all this stuff kind of here for uh, the demonstration. It's not on but assume it's on and everything's working but we're going to assume we're going to assume that it's on, but again, everything's off because we're, we're pretending for this video. Anyways, for this, for this procedure for suctioning, always ensure that the patient requires suctioning before you suction them out. So give them a good listen over with your stethoscope, grab your stethoscope. Of course, tell the patient what you're going to do as well. So sir, I'm going to listen to your chest. Take a listen as the ventilator delivers a breath. And again, work your way down in an orderly fashion listening anteriorly as well as laterally and what I hear is coarse crackles in the patient's chest and some wheezes so I know this patient's going to need some suctioning plus you can also observe the airway that they have in and this is an endotracheal tube so the endotracheal tube sticking out and I can see secretions going into the patient when the ventilator delivers a breath and I can see secretions coming out when the patient exhales so that's another telltale sign that my patient requires suctioning now also look at the type of tube that you've got inside your patient. This is an evac tube. So it's an evac endotracheal tube. So with this style of tube, I probably will need to do something more than just the typical suctioning that would be required with a patient that's got an ordinary conventional endotracheal tube. So some of the things that I need to do now is I have to make sure, first of all, that I check my patient's vital signs. So look at the vital sign monitor and assess the vital signs so that you know what to compare before as well as after tracheal suctioning has been completed. The next thing I need to go do is go to my ventilator and with my ventilator it's important that I increase the FiO2 or the oxygen concentration on the ventilator and there's two ways of doing that. The first way is to simply look at the ventilator's hard keys or if it's a touch screen key that the ventilator has is find the oxygen concentration setting or if it has an increase in oxygen button. So the increase in oxygen button, and it might be called something different depending on the ventilator, is simply a button when you push it, it automatically increases the oxygen concentration to 100% for either so many breaths or for a certain time period. This particular ventilator has an increase oxygen button right over here and it allows the oxygen to go from the current oxygen concentration to 100 percent for two minutes. So if I push this button, the ventilator would automatically increase the oxygen concentration the patient's getting to 100 percent. The second way of doing it is to go into the ventilator's mode menu and within the mode choose, 100, or choose the oxygen setting and then increase the FiO2 manually to 100 percent. Confirm that setting change and then the patient will be on 100 percent until you're done tracheally suctioning out the patient. The next thing that you need to do is go to your suction regulators. So you can see we've got the suction regulators in the back there. All you need to do is make sure with your suction regulators that they're turned on and that they're set to the appropriate suction level. And since we're going to be suctioning out a patient's trachea and this is an adult patient, we're going to set the suction level to minus 120 millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to go back here, it might be difficult to see because of this water bag hanging, but the suction regulator is right over here, so I'm going to include the tubing close to the patient, well, as close as I am to the patient. I'm going to turn this to regulate and then make sure that the gauge is at 
registering minus 120 millimeters of mercury, which it is. So I've got my suction turned on, it's set, it's ready to go, and it's hooked up to the closed suction system on the patient. So it's hooked up right over here. Now this has a lockout mechanism on here, which should be off, so here's your lockout. This is a safety. It prevents suction from accidentally being applied to the patient's airway when it's not in use, all right? So to recap things, we hook the patient up on, whoops, sorry about that. We hook the patient up on to our closed suction system. We've got our suction set to minus 120 millimeters of mercury. We are assessing the patient's vital signs. We've already listened to the patient's chest, so we know they need suctioning. We also have the oxygen on the ventilator set to 100% in some way, shape, or form. Okay, so now we need to suction out the patient. For the demonstration, I'm gonna stand right over here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Now when you're suctioning out your patients, right, one thing you want to do is make sure that you're stabilizing the endotracheal tube. And the reason for that is when you advance the suction catheter into the patient, you're going to be putting a little bit of strain on that endotracheal tube. And if the securing device of the endotracheal tube is a little bit loose, or if the tapes are coming loose on the patient, you could accidentally advance the endotracheal tube into the patient's trachea even farther than it already is. So make sure you stabilize it so it doesn't go further into the patient's trachea and result potentially in a right main stem intubation when you're doing suctioning, and, but also on the withdrawal of the catheter. You don't want to accidentally extubate the patient when you're pulling the catheter out, okay? So we'll stabilize the tube, make sure the safety is unlocked, okay, so that you're gonna have suction. Support the tube, now grab the tube and the sheath at the same time, advance the catheter, pull back on the sheath, and continue in this motion until you feel resistance or the catheter comes to a stop. Then simply pull back one centimeter and now simply apply suction and withdraw the secretions from your patient's airway. Like so, until the little black line right over here on the suction catheter is sticking outside far enough so that the catheter is completely withdrawn from your patient's endotracheal tube. At this point in time, you can lock this out if you don't think you're going to be suctioning your patient again or simply leave it on but remember at the end of the procedure that you lock out the catheter from the suction source right after you suction the patient note the secretions that you got the volume of them the color and consistency of them as well go back to your patient listen to your patient's chest so sir we're going to take another listen to your chest of course i'm speeding this up the patient's chest is still crackly, so I know there's more secretions on there, plus I can see them inside the endotracheal tube every time a breath's delivered and the patient's exhales. <clears throat> Checking my monitor to make sure that the patient's still stable. I'm gonna look at my ventilator, make sure it's on 100% still. And then once the patient's stabilized, what I can do is I can suction them out again. So this is still off, like the safety's off. So I'm going to tell the patient I'm going to suction them out. I should have done that the first time as well. So we're going to clean out that breathing tube for you. Support the endotracheal tube. Wrap the catheter in the sheet. Advance both, pull back on the sheet. Advance both, pull back on the sheet. And you do this gently until you feel resistance. Pull back a centimeter. Now apply suction and withdraw the catheter out of the patient's airway until you see that black line again right over here. Maximum suctioning time should be roughly around that 10 to 15 second mark, usually no longer than that because you don't want complications to occur when you're suctioning out your patient. Okay, so I've suctioned my patient out twice tracheally. Lock that out. Again, it's optional whether you do it this time or not. I'm going to check my ventilator. My patient's still on 100% oxygen. Vital signs of the patient have returned to normal. I'll listen to the patient's chest again. So it's going to take a listen to your chest. Chest is clear, the endotracheal tube looks clear. Let my patient recover, so I'm gonna look at the vital signs. Vital signs to, seems to be normal. Patient's still on 100%. Now, at this point in time, there's gonna be a little bit of variation with what you probably will be doing in the hospitals that you're working at, especially when you have an evac tube in place. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to suction out the area above the patient's cuff inside the trachea, and the evac tube allows us to do that. So in order to fulfill that, what I'm going to simply do is detach the suction tubing from the 
closed suction system. I still have minus 120 here set. You can kind of maybe hear that. I'm not sure if you can. And now all I'm going to simply do is take the evac catheter and attach it to my suction. And I'm going to now suction out from above the patient's cuff inside of the trachea. And I'll do that until all the secretions are removed. When all the secretions are removed, I simply detach the tubing from the catheter and I'm going to now cap that off. So the patient's trachea is now clean. So I take a look in the patient's mouth and I see, oh, there's a bunch of secretions in there. So sir, we're going to get all that gunk and secretions out of, the, out of your mouth and out of your throat there. So now what we need to do is pharyngeal suctioning. Now one way of doing pharyngeal suctioning is to grab a catheter, your suction catheter like this, and again it's still clean technique. Take your suction catheter, attach your suction tubing to it like so. Now because we're going pharyngeal, you can go back to your regulator, and I know you can't see in the video, but all I've done is I've simply increased the suction pressure on my cat on my uh, suction regulator to full line pressure. So take the catheter, follow along the side of the endotracheal tube till you'll see that catheter disappear beyond the base of the tongue. So when you see that occur, you can advance it a centimeter or two, and what that's going to do, it's going to place the catheter along the endotracheal tube along the patient's posterior pharyngeal wall. So it should be sitting somewhere, well, just before the esophagus. And at this point in time, include the thumb control port and remove all the secretions out of your patient's airway. And once they're all gone, remove the suction catheter. Now this can be done orally, but you can also do it nasally. So if you're going to do it nasally, again, a clean catheter, simply tell the patient you go down the patient's nose, insert it through the nares, through the nostrils, advance the catheter until you see it disappear beyond the base of the tongue, apply suctioning, and you just keep it there until you've got all the secretions out. Try not to get into this, what I call the sewing machine technique, where you put the catheter in the patient's pharynx, and then you go up and down like this, like a sewing machine. Just put the catheter there, apply your suction until all the secretions are gone. You can move it from side to side in the patient's mouth and rotate it slightly to see if that results in the removal of more secretions as well. Okay. So we suction out the patient's pharynx. Once you've done that, you take your dirty catheter, this would go in your soiled garbage can or your disposal container that you've got there. So I'll place it in my disposal container. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put my regulator here back to regulate. So it's back on regulate and I'm going to take this and attach it to my closed suction system. Again, this is locked out so it's the safety. I'll attach the catheter like so. Now if I need to suction out my patient again with the closed suction system, it's set up, it's ready to go. Now you could leave it on, the regulator on, or you could shut it off as well. So I'm going to shut it off. Now if I needed to suction the patient out again with tracheal suction, all I simply would do is turn it to regulate suction my patient out. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how to hook up the EVAC catheter and what you should set that catheter's pressure to, to a suction tubing. So I'm going to grab some suction tubing and I've got some open suction tubing right over here and it should be long enough. I'll connect it up to my collection unit. So you can't see it but there's a collection unit right here, a second suction. So I've hooked it up to my suction unit. I'm going to turn my suction regulator on. So it's now on and set to regulate. I'm going to include this and I'm going to check the pressure. I'm going to adjust the pressure to roughly minus 30 millimeters of mercury. Okay. So now what I can do, and what some centers will do, is they'll leave the suction tubing that's hooked up to the collection unit with the regulator, they'll have that on continuously at a low pressure. So when I, what I end up doing is I end up hooking up this tubing to the evac catheter, and now that simply stays on continuous suctioning and constantly removes whatever secretions are being deposited or collecting inside the patient's trachea but above the cuff. So you can have the EVAC catheter hooked up to suction tubing that has continuous aspiration or continuous suction applied to it but at a low pressure. So it could be anywhere between minus 25 to minus 35 or 40 centimeters of water pressure. We leave ours at minus 30, uh, sorry not centimeters of water pressure, minus 30 millimeters of mercury negative pressure. So that's going to continuously clean out that area above the patient's cuff. 
and to some degree, some of the secretions that might be pooling in the patient's pharynx, depending on the patient, the position of the patient, whether they're supine, high filers, semi filers, etc. Now, before you're done, the next thing you need to do is clean out your suction tubing because guess what? It's probably going to be pretty cruddy. That's where those pinkies come in. So we're going to go grab a pinky. Now, the pinky is just simply that normal saline ampule. So we're going to grab one of these things. They come in a series like so. So just grab one. That's all you'll need. Next thing you want to do is open it. So I just took the top off. I've opened the ampule up. The suction's set to regulate, so we'll turn that on to regulate. Now that suction that I just turned on is the one that's already hooked up to my closed suction system, because that's what I want to clean out. The suction catheter as well as the suction tubing. So it's set to regulate. I'm then going to unlock the safety. So I've unlocked that so now I can aspirate. And I'm going to attach the pinky to this port right over here. Now this port is meant for placing fluids, etc., down the endotracheal tube if you want to instill your patient or provide medications down the endotracheal tube, but we can also use it to clean out the endotracheal tube. So I'm going to take this saline pinky, pop this cover off, place the pinky on like so, and now when I squeeze the pinky on apply suction, I'm going to do that until the tubes or the suction catheter is clean. Okay, so there we go, cleaned it all out, it's nice and clean. Once I've done that, lock this out, take the pinky off, and close it up like so. Okay? So that's cleaning out the suction catheter. So to recap what we've done so far, we've tracheal suctioned our patient safely, we've suctioned above the evac or above the cuff with the evac catheter, we pharyngeal suctioned our patient, and then we went and connected our second suction device with suction tubing up to the evac catheter to provide constant aspiration of secretions that might be forming above the cuff and the endotracheal tube out all the time. And the last thing we did is we just cleaned up all the suction tubing that we use for tracheal suctioning using the pinky. At this point in time, what you want to do is take another listen to your patient's chest. So listen to their chest, make sure you've got good air entry, no secretions accumulated. Take a look at their vital signs. Make sure the vital signs have returned back to where they were prior to you placing, or prior to you suctioning the patient. Then go back to your ventilator, and with your ventilator, if you've adjusted the oxygen concentration on the ventilator manually, go back to the original FiO2 that you were on, or the patient was on. And then once you've assessed the patient, you've made sure your equipment's back to normal, the vital signs have returned back to normal for your patient, Clean up whatever you need to clean up. And then put everything else away that's no longer required. And that's, in essence, how you suction out a patient's trachea, pharynx, and if you're using an evac catheter, how to suction out the evac catheter, and then also how to put the, uh, or how to, cook the, how to connect the evac catheter to the secondary suction source. It's probably also a good idea that you label which suction tubing and regulators for tracheal suctioning and which one specifically for the evac catheter so they don't get mixed up there. Okay, so this has been George. If you like this video, please let me know. If you dislike it again, let me know, but also leave me some comments. And of course, please, if you get a chance to subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos. Another one that's going to be coming to you real soon is going to be extubation. Have a great day. Now, again, where did I put the remote? Can't find the remote, so we'll have to shut this one off the old-fashioned way. Where is that?